What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Creating Wealth Podcast, where I, Kyle, from Kyle Curtin Real Estate, interview local top dogs in the real estate investing, wealth building, and personal finance industries. Let's build together. Welcome to episode 17 of the podcast. Today, I get the amazing opportunity of interviewing Brian Lucia. He is an absolutely inspiring and extremely successful investor and founder of Bel Air Property Management with multiple offices in Mass. This was an extremely informative interview with absolutely brilliant information that is all priceless, all in one place. Brian is such an unbelievable person, and I am extremely grateful to share the final part of this three-part interview with everyone. This is definitely one to listen to over and over again, because there is so much value that you won't absorb all of it in just one listen. This series is an absolute game changer for anyone just jumping into real estate or have been in the game for a very long time. There is unreal amounts of value in this episode and I hope you enjoy. Let's jump right into the episode. Next question here. What is something that you thought about business, networking, or wealth creation that changed as you went along? Wow, everything that we've just been talking about, innovation, right? The things that we used to do just don't work anymore. Yep. When we had 10 units, I mean, my wife and I laugh about this now. I still have it in my file cabinet. I mean, we started with a black paper ledger book, just like my dad used to use. Yeah. Right? And we would write in the numbers in pencil and... Hun, what did they pay for security deposit four years ago? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> right, right. So that was like the biggest thing. And to get my wife to change from that to an Excel spreadsheet was like ground shaking. It's like, well, I don't know. I'm not a computer person. Let's just stay with the paper ledger. Okay. So now we've gone from the paper ledger to the Excel spreadsheet to Quicken or QuickBooks, whatever you call that one. Yep. Then uh, we started to integrate that with Google Drive and Sheets to the uh, different macros that you can do in Google Drive. And then we jumped up to Appfolio. So now what we're doing in Appfolio, we could never do with that paper ledger. I mean, now yep. I can hit the search button on the number of a unit and boom, there's the whole thing. The rent roll, the ledger, the history, uh, their lease date, all the documents on one page. Whenever we scan anything in, we can drop it right in there. We never miss, we never miss a beat now. And now I'm anal. So we back it up on Appfolio. I back it up on Dropbox. Yep. I back it up on Google Drive. So I'm on three separate cloud servers. So, you know, we'd need Armageddon for me to lose all my data. And I still have what used to be that black ledger book in my home office in my basement i have 40 file cabinet drawers <laughs> i've got 10 yep. banks of four and they're filled with i mean i'm an identity theft pirate's dream <laughs> see but i bet it's really nice to you know flick the light on and and look at those file cabinets and see that this is where it all began. I look at that that black ledger book, you know, with the handwritten information in there and say, this is where it started. And now look at, you know, open up your Google Chrome and everything and, yeah. you know, look at our folio and say, this is where I am now. Yeah, we've, bought, we've built a monster profit and loss sheet in Google Sheets. And we use it as a check and balance with that folio. So the first page is your profit and loss sheet, right? And everything's a macro. It yeah. goes back. There's 12 tabs after that. We track rent that comes in, who paid, how they paid, when they paid. It calculates out the um, management fees. And then we've got two more tabs on that sheet. One's for labor, one's for materials. All of this feeds forward to the profit and loss sheet. We never touch the profit and loss sheet. It's all data entry on the back. Now we're just giving the profit and loss sheet with a 1099 to our clients. All the work's been done all year long. Boom. That's the way it's supposed to happen, right? Yeah. But I mean, the old way, oh, break out the ledger. Okay. Let's open up an Excel sheet. And it, was, <laughs> it was 
a painful nightmare doing the taxes before. Now it's with joy and excitement after Christmas. Okay, let's get it done by New Year's. <laughs> and the yeah. truth is, after we do the payout on the 15th of December, it's already done. Last entry of the year, right? Because we close on the middle of the month because of the way we collect rents and all that. Yeah. So yeah, the innovation and embracing that, that's the hardest part, you know, trying to keep everyone on the team rowing the boat in the same direction. Yep. That's the hardest, that's the hardest thing, right? Uh, Jim Collins says getting everyone on the bus and then whoever, getting the best people, putting them on the bus and then figuring out what seat they should be on, right? I love that analogy. Before you said that, I honestly, I've never heard that one before. Oh, uh, good to great. Good to great. Yeah. I haven't read, that's a book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I haven't read that one before either. I'll throw that on my very long list. <laughs> <laughs> it's either Jim Collins or Tim Collins. Mm -hmm. uh, he had good to great. And then he wrote a sequel to that. Um, I can't remember it, but it's either Jim or Tim Collins. And then the third book was choose to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely check those ones out. I remember what's in the book, but I can't remember the guy's name. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So did I hit that one? There's something in the business network and wealth. Of <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, the wealth creation part of it. It's, well, this is a really good one. Um, meetups, right? Yeah. This is, this is gold. If you don't listen to anything else in this podcast, listen to this one. So we all know how a real works, right? We all go in there. We're shark in the room. We're looking for the person with the deeper pockets who can fund our deal. Yes. Everyone in the room is looking for that one person. And we all want to get them into our deal, right? But we're not competitive, right? So how do you do that differently? Kyle, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do when you're not doing real estate or when you have to work your job? What are you passionate about? Um, it's not much else. <laughs> Honestly. You like American muscle cars? I was never really into cars. Hang out with my friends, you know, get something to eat. Okay, you like food? Yeah. Okay. Would you go to a wine tasting or cheese event? Probably not. Okay, you're going to make this hard for me, right? Let's just say that you like American muscle cars. Okay, all right. All right? Or uh, you like to surf. Or uh, is there a nonprofit organization that you could help if you, if you could? Yeah. Something near and dear to your heart. Throw it out there. What is it? Um, that's a good, really good question. I'm no totally judgment. killing your example. I'm, I'm no, so no, no. sorry. <laughs> no judgment here. Well, what I'm trying to do is just pull it away from real estate. That's all. Like yeah. we all have lives away from real estate, right? Totally. Yeah. Like, I've got a Beamer Z3. It's the one from the James Bond car. I like Beamers, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, but that's me. I don't want to make it about me. Let's say uh, you, uh, what's the, uh, the cancer, the race they do uh, run for cancer. I can't think of what it's called. I think I know what you're talking about. Every June, like the, every June race, race, like for, the breast race for the cure or something like that. Yeah. Run for the cure. Let's say that's your thing, right? And uh, your company, you're going to sponsor and you're going to get people and we're going to sponsor this cure for cancer, right? Yeah. People see other people volunteering at their best possible self when they're at some event that they're passionate about and giving to right yeah. so maybe it's that cancer event well at that cancer event our givers maybe i lost my grandmother and i have it on my heart to make donations there right so you go in there you're already in a group of like-minded people yeah. you all have the same passion you all share the same heart what do you do well, i'm a hedge fund manager oh okay what do you do well I'm Kyle and I run this podcast for investors and we find real estate where we get returns that are just crushing anything you can get in the stock market. Yeah. 
So now I've just put myself in a situation with other affluent people who are not real estate people looking to shark that room and find the person with the deeper pocket. See, museums, art events, charities, food shelters, anything like this. You go to that meetup. My son's a stock trader. He could go to a stock trader meetup, be talking about techniques and says, oh, yeah, our family, we invest in real estate. Oh, really? Tell me more. Or Harley Davidson's, right? These are not cheap machines. Yeah. American muscle cars. Like uh, if you go to the ice cream shops during the summer, they've got all those cars out there. Yep. That's fun. That would be fun to walk around and look at all those cars. You think the owners of those cars have money? Look at the car. <laughs> nope. Wow. What do you do? Oh, I'm an engineer at IBM. What do you do? I create and I create real estate investments, getting astronomical returns for my investors. Oh, really? Tell me more. It's got nothing to do with real estate, but everything to do with your heart. What do you love? Go there. Wow. If it's a worthy cause, other people who love it will be there. And some of them have money and they may be looking for that investment. I mean, me at church, I didn't go to church to find investors. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, my investments in church have eternal ramifications. Of course. Yep. But, you know, uh, whatever it is, I love the muscle car things. A muscle, me uh, uh, a Mustang, a Ford Mustang meetup group. Boom. Perfect. You know, bring business cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're honestly, you're really right. Honestly, it's, you know, and it blows my mind kind of like, um, you know, just getting out there and, and just having fun, like enjoying your life and stuff and going to things that might not be like what you're looking for. But what a you concept. Find, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you might find some really crazy things there that you have no idea. And it just comes from just putting yourself out there, you know, telling people what you do, seeing what other people do, you know, just having an interest in who they are. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and the, the firsthand, um, you know, example of, of you at church, like we were talking about earlier, you didn't go to church to, to find investors, you know, you go to a church oh. because you enjoy it. And, you know, it just so happened that it worked out that way. <laughs> you know, you mentioned that and I think about it, right? Everybody laughed, but there was like three or five guys that didn't. <laughs> Serious guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Hmm. I'll see you after the service. Interesting. Let's chat. A little mental note. I think I got to talk to Brian. Yep. Yeah. That can happen anywhere. Just putting yourself out there. So how far did I drift off that? Uh, did I change as I... Something in the wealth creation and networking of business. Yeah, just be in those other places where affluent people are, not necessarily related to your business or industry. You know, there's other industries out there where people make money. Yep. I mean, do you like video games or something like that? I don't know. I mean, do a separate lifestyle list. What are the things I enjoy about life? Are any of those related to some activity that affluent people do? That There's one, your next meetup. Exactly. That one speaks volumes. Honestly, like that's it's so out of the box that like it that one just just really, really speaks to me a lot. You know, like all the meetups that I try to go to are like real estate this, business this, but let's change it up a little bit. You know, you never know what can happen in some, some of these other places. You never know. It's like permission to have fun. <laughs> For real. You're totally right. Yep. You never know. All right. We got about seven more questions to go here. So uh, <laughs> how are we doing? Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. You have no okay. idea. I'm really enjoying this too, because I do love to talk. And, you know, the things I'm sharing with you, I can't share with that 80% of the world out there because they're not ready to talk about it. I agree here. with you. Honestly, so I, really I feel like that's a pretty generous percentage. You know, there's so there's only certain, I guess, kind of people that, that you can have these kind of conversations with, you know, that are like extremely open-minded and like, 
you know, because a lot of people might have like an ego or like, a, oh, I know it all. Like you're crazy. Like that's not possible. But then you start to find some other people that are actually start to like ask questions and it's it's a lot less common to be able to have these kind of conversations with other people like believe me i'm like beyond ecstatic to have like this really crazy conversation with you right now like i i live for these conversations because they don't happen often but when they do it's it's game changing you know i i live in a world and i say this to my son my wife my daughter-in-law these are our dinner conversations. You know, this is our world. This is where we are. This is the things we talk about at dinner, you know, this type of deal or that type of deal. I mean, I was talking with my daughter-in-law, this whole concept of a rifle approach for marketing on a mailing campaign and then combining, if you could do it, if you found the right target, a seller financing with a little bit higher interest on an amortization table. And this is kind of an ad advanced blow your mind concept, but the banks aren't stupid, right? Yeah. When you're, when you get a normal, normal mortgage, your first payment, two thirds of it is the interest because they know you're only going to live there five to seven years. What if you structured minimum down payment, five to 10 grand, whatever it might be for a property did seller financing and offered the guy 4%, 5%, but it's not amortized. That's very interesting. Do you get, do you get that? Do you see that? So on the bank's amortization schedule in five years time, two thirds of all those payments is interest. Yeah. On a seller financing in five years time, 6%. Or four percent, yeah, five percent. I see what you're saying. So That's basically, tens like, of thousands of dollars you've saved. Yep, I I totally get what you're saying, and that's that's a, a really interesting um, concept. You know, to be able to give like uh, a motivated seller like a higher return on yeah. like the money that you're giving them, yeah. and, and not having to go with the bank and giving them a lot more value. Versus maybe going to the bank and getting a lower interest rate, but you're paying out a lot more to the bank to be able to use that money. And, and the beauty of this for the seller, right? Because they're looking in LA, they can't find anything under a million bucks, yeah. you know, something they're going to rehab, but then the ARV, the numbers are just blowing me away as far as what they're paid for something. But Joe Normal, he's going to sell his property for whatever reason, if he got it in probate or whatever. He doesn't want the property, he wants to sell it. Okay, so yep. he's in California. He sells that thing outright, short-term capital gains for a million bucks. Government's yep. got their handout for 600,000. Yep. That's yep. not a good deal. However, mm -hmm. if he owns it outright because of probate and you can work a seller finance, now he becomes the bank of California and he's not in that higher tax bracket so he's paying lower taxes on the money he's getting every year. Oh, and you're paying him interest on it. What's not to love? <laughs> so you're telling me I can have cash flow for the next five to 10 years, live the dreams of my life, not have to worry about this property. By the way, if you screw up, I get the property back. I'm in a lower tax break, making money. How do I lose? I still, I'm the bank. I've, I'm, the, the property is the collateral. If you screw up, I get the, I keep all your money and I get the property back. Yep. How is that a loss? You're just back to where you started with a lot more money in your pocket. The, the thing to do is to make that seller realize going out and getting the conventional loan and paying all that tax up front might not be their best option. But you never know. It depends on them. Do they want to buy a house somewhere else and they need the money? Fine. But if they already live in their dream home and this just happened to them, you can show them a way to have passive income and collect interest. Yep. I'm obsessed with like the seller financing and like subject to concepts. I would love to get, get property that way. So these are the tools in your tool belt. But always make it about the person. What can I bring to dinner? right? Yeah. What do you want me to bring for dessert? What's important to you? How do I help you grow your business? 
What's the biggest problem you have owning this real estate? Where do you want to go with this? If, if I could give you what you needed, what would it take for you to dispose of this property? What are the chances you might be interested in doing it this way? You never know. That's and it right. might solve their problem, you know, in a much better fashion than trying to do it traditionally. And they might, you know, keep a lot more money in their pocket from, you know, not having to pay a seller's agent and the capital gains and the, you know, all of a sudden your your the amount that you sell it for is sliced in half. And then at that point, is that amount still sufficient enough to be able to to get you to that goal for wanting to sell the property? Who knows? And you and I both know once you control the property, you hold the keys. Literally. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what can you do with the property, right? Yep. 20, 15, 30 different things. Who knows? The options are. Yeah. Under. Yeah. All right. How are we doing here? I think we only have two more to go. Is that right? Uh, yep. Okay. So this one, I know we've talked about a ton of different values, you know, especially okay. like the, the relationships and the people and helping everyone out, you know, being, being genuine. I'm definitely, you know, not trying to answer this question for you. Um, what values are most important to you when it comes to doing business? Definitely treating people fairly. You know, not for any other reason other than it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Because karma will come back and bite you. And um, at the end of the day, if you've done a clean deal, if, if you've done the right thing, your head's going to hit that pillow at night. And, you know, the, the, it's never going to be perfect. You know, you'll have those water heater moments, yep. but you'll know that you played the game right. You know, I mean, you may not always win every round, but how you play the game for me is important. And, you know, people always ask, finish this sentence. Life is blank for me. It's a game all day long, you know. And I try to structure the game where you win, I win, the landlord wins, the tenant wins, the property wins, yep. you know, play the game that way. It shouldn't be, we win, you lose. And uh, these businesses that have an adversarial relationship with their clients, how do you do that? I mean, I don't want to know how you do that. I'm just <laughs> asking a rhetorical question. How can you do that? And you know, it's like, oh, you know, this client was terrible today. It's like, well, why you do this business? You know, um, are you in a business where like, uh, what is it? Nordstrom, one of my favorite stories, right? This, um, this woman had bought boots for her husband. I think it was Nordstrom. Mm -hmm. And before the boots arrived, the husband passed away. Obviously grief stricken, the wife called customer service, told what happened. And Nordstrom could have played this any way at all. And they said, no problem, man, please, ma'am, send back the boots. And is there anything else we can do for you? Yeah. Another, one of my favorite Nordstrom stories, this guy had a set of tires that he wanted to return. And he brought them back to Nordstrom. And Nordstrom gave him a full refund on his tires. He did not buy the tires from Nordstrom. <laughs> Their customer service is so far above anything you can imagine that it was not even an option to not give this guy excellent customer service. Now, I wrote another blog, customer service is not a department, right? It's how you do business. I mean, and if you can, from that moment, you write your SOP. If you can structure your game where everyone can win, you'll play the game a long time. If you structure your game for you to always win and somebody else to always lose, there's only so many times you'll be able to play that game because people will know if they play the game with you, they will lose. Yep. Whereas if you can structure it where people know they will win if they play the game with you, 
there'll be a line outside your door of people who want to play. So do the right thing, treat people right, have integrity, respect. I mean, I'm Italian, I'm French, I fly off the handle at times, you know, I can say words in Italian that my grandmother would reach up from the grave and wash my mouth. Yep. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to treat people right. You got to treat people fairly. And God gave us two ears and one mouth. So try to use that ratio. Wow. You know, I, I totally agree with, um, you know, like the, the win-win scenarios i feel like honestly everybody can win like not even in real estate but just like in almost every transaction that there is because i mean like you're exchanging value between two people you know whether like you're going into nordstrom and buying a pair of boots you're exchanging your money for those boots you want those boots no you know in exchange nordstrom will get your money there's value on both sides mm -hmm. now if circumstances change you know like that unfortunate story that that you mentioned then like their their business model is so like much on a on a much higher level that they were able to exchange the value you know the other way around and i i feel like you're totally right you know in terms of um like if like you kind of go into a business or something where with the mentality where you're winning over other people or like other people might be, I guess, like suffering in a way for your gain, then yeah, yeah it might work for a little bit. But that's hard. But exactly. That's hard on your heart. Yep. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, eventually you're going to get exposed and you're going to get found out. You know, if your intentions are good at heart, then like you're going to get found out too, but you're going to be much farther along than the other guy. You know, and... It's like, I, I feel like it's totally like, just like beyond magnified, you know, with your business, you know, like just like the relationship with the people and stuff is so extremely valuable that people start to take notice and then they tell other people and then other people tell other people. And now, you know, all of a sudden, like you said, you know, people are coming to your door because they know that there's value in it for them as well as value in it for you. And everything is just like full circle. Everything's even. Everybody's winning. I want to thank you for phrasing it like that because it helps me to visualize it and see it too. Um, you know, I live in my world and I think that way. But for you, the way that you just said it, it, it really puts it back on me. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's what this is about. So to hear you say it, I want to thank you just as much because uh, you, you crystallized that whole thought, right? That it's other people can win by playing the game yeah. with us or, or, or anybody if that's the intention when you build the game. Like uh, I have a, a resident, one of my owners is selling the building. I'm bending over her backwards to find her another place because the owner wants to live in her building. This, I wanna read her last comment to me here. Yep. Okay. So she says, all right, keep me updated and I'll let you know how the search is doing as well because she's looking at some properties and this and that. Uh, so I made a comment about one of the properties. She's a great tenant. She lives in one of my best buildings. I have some properties that I'm borderline would like to give back to the, the landlord. So she says, okay, I heard that. Uh, it being on X street made me nervous anyways. I should have known better that you're looking out for me and you would have mentioned if you wanted me in there. That's my tenant talking to me that she knows I've got her back. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, you know, for, for me, that's like putting on my sneakers. It's the way you're supposed to do it. How do I win putting her in a crappy unit? She's going to tell, tell her 10 of her best friends saying that guy was a jerk. I had a nice place and he put me in a, a dung heap. Yep. That doesn't win. If I find her a nice place, 
she'll tell her 10 friends, you got to rent from Brian, he's doing it right. And I'm not saying that because I think I'm anything special. I'm not, I'm, I'm just a guy. Uh, you see me on the street, no, <laughs> you know, too many things I could say, but this is a public podcast, <laughs> you know, no, uh, no rainbows are flying out of me there. I'll say it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just an, a normal guy. And uh, this is a normal girl who's working real hard. And she's in a tough spot because her property is going to sell and the, she's going to have to move out of her place. She deserves better. We yeah, all yeah. deserve better. We deserve to treat ourselves better and take better care of ourselves. I'm not saying I'm going to like work out and stop eating pizza, but <laughs> you know, that those people who wake up and go to that job every day, they're commuting 20 hours a week, working for a boss that, you know, beats them up and yep. there's a better way to live. There's a better way to live. And you're going to help people get there with your podcast. I hope so. <laughs> hey, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for, uh, Asking this old guy on. Honestly, Brian, the pleasure is completely mine. Trust me. You have no idea. So we've got a question 10 looking at us. Yes, we do. Uh, I think I've answered this one multiple times throughout <laughs> the interview. Do right. you read? Uh, yep. Do you mind if I read the question? Go is right it, ahead. Be my guess. Okay. All right. Do you read? <laughs> what is your favorite business, investing, or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? Well, over the years of my life, that answer has changed. So if you're a beginner, look for books that will give you the basic principles. Once you figure out which one of these dishes on the buffet table is for you, then read or digest more of that. Me, all day long, I'm a buy and hold guy. I love rentals. I love collecting rent to provide a good place for families month after month after month, and they continue to pay down my mortgage so I can continue to take care of their property. Uh, as you get further on, you're wrestling with your standard operating procedures right now. I mean, look for books for that. I mean, if you're starting out right now, maybe that book isn't for you. But um, 80, 90% of all the investors I know started with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. After you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I would read the Cash Flow Quadrants, where they talk about having a job, owning a business, running a business, and then all those intellectual things to create passive income. Definitely books like Michael Gerber's The E Myth Demystified, or Traction, or Rocket Fuel. I really like Traction. I mean, uh, I'm in his book, The E-Myth, but I really like Traction. And I can't think of the author's name. I know you know it. Uh, Gino Wickman? Gino Wickman, Gino's yep. book. I love that book because he says, okay, sit down with your team, have this discussion, and it will reveal the answer. Sit down your team and have this discussion, and it will reveal the answer. And once you get these answers, that's it. That's how you do things. That's your brand. That's your identity. So, um, yeah, and then some of the other books I really liked this year were Fanocracy, mm -hmm. uh, How to Make Your Clients Your Fans and Your Fans Your Clients. That was a really good one. I enjoyed that one. Um, <laughs> the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Beep. That was, a, <laughs> that was good. I mean, I did not enjoy the profanity so much. Um, but uh, that book is all around the premises is that you get to choose what you care about. Yeah. Right. And you get to make the own priorities in your life. So, yeah, I do love to read. Um, one book that really gave me clarity was Start at the End by Dave Levinsky. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is like a light mint green color and it's a really short pencil right and uh the whole premise of that book and again this falls in with e-myth and traction and a lot of these other types of sop books but um he starts the book like you're walking into your office 
the last day before retirement and there's cake and there's a party and everyone's celebrating and you get your gold watch and this is your last day because you just sold the business, right? So he challenges you to say, what does that look like? What does it mean to you that you've reached that point? What's your net worth? What have you earned? What the, all these things, right? And then he says, okay, where are you today? And how many years out in the future is that? And then he chops it all down into those little bits and those habits that you need to change today yeah. to get to that, right? Like, what do I need to do today, this week, this month to get to that point where I'm at the gold watch selling my business? And he actually walks you through how to prepare to sell your business. I'm never going to sell my business. But that process, right? And then, of course, Gary, Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, The One Thing. Same type of book, right? Knocking down the dominoes. Uh, knock down the smaller dominoes. Watch the larger dominoes fall. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the podcast, my domino, like maybe a little bit bigger, is to get 13 rentals under agreement a month. Mm-hmm. Hey, I might be at 40 this month. So what? It doesn't matter. Yep. I'm focused on those activities and those habits that I have to do every day to knock down that domino. So I probably just gave you a library. For that um, <laughs> You'll keep me busy for a little bit. <laughs> whether you're starting out or whether you're advanced, the one thing, if you want to be a buy and hold real estate investor, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor by same people, Jay Papasan and Gary Keller. Yeah. That was a great book. I was turning the pages on that one saying, oh, that's me. That's what I did. That's me. That's what I did. It's like, wow, this is so cool. But I didn't like the end of the chapter where he says, okay, now you sell everything and move on to something else. Yeah. But I'll now here I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. So right. That today, book's like a Bible to me. I, I love that book so much. Yeah. Yeah, and then again, the um, same genre, the Red Book, the millionaire real estate investor talks, I mean, um, real estate agent talks more about building the business, which I'm sure you got that one and you've been chopping through that one. So, I actually haven't read that one. I was thinking about that one, honestly, like a couple of days ago. I think it's on, on my list. I have like a, a notes page in my phone that's extremely long. Literally every single book that anyone recommends, I'll toss it on the list. Because there's so many different perspectives out there. I want to try to hear them all. It's yeah. unrealistic and you're not going to hear them all, but it's really fun to try. Well, you know? it, it is realistic if you say it's realistic. Like uh, what does Henry Ford say? Um, if you don't believe you can do something, you're right. And if you do believe you can do something, you're right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know that I could just say one book um that's not a bad thing though because you're right you know kind of to your point earlier there might be different there's going to be you know different stages and like different parts of your life that like certain books are really going to resonate to those certain areas and like there might be information in there that you're not necessarily ready for yet but you know you might like find out about that book at like the right time and things just might click and if not, you know, if you're like constantly consuming and, and constantly reading and stuff, things are going to jump out at you, you yeah. know? Well, one thing that would be a book for beginners or for anyone advanced, because your one thing changes throughout your lifetime in business. You know, that always changes. So definitely that one. Uh, if you're just starting out, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. And then everybody recommends the E-Myth. But I would toss that one up at the same time with Traction by Gino Wickman. Yeah, I'm definitely ordering Traction. Honestly, probably when we get off the call. (laughs) Ordering a couple. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I do love to talk. I hope this that your um, viewers can get a few nuggets out of this. Like uh, in all the training that I've been through, there's always been one or two pieces that I've been able to apply. So I hope something here can help your audience. Uh, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. 
because uh, old guys like me love to share our stories. <laughs> uh, I do want to catch up with you in a couple of years to see where you are. Because what do you do these every week or something? Yep. Yeah, I'll try to interview like one person a week. Um, and then like they're actually for the next week. So I'll have like an episode that I post one week and I try to interview somebody. So it kind of like crosses over. And uh, yeah. well, you're going to be exposed to so many ideas just talking to people. So honestly, know, it's like I, I'm not you know, obviously, you know, trying to like brag or anything. I just do this for fun and everything. But I've I've had some some really crazy concepts come from like kind of some of the people that I've talked to and to especially to be able to share those with others as well to kind of learn with everybody else like not you know just for myself but but to be able to put other people in those positions as well to be able to see that and be like all right whoa like that's that's something that could really change everything you know doing the right thing i appreciate that a lot brian you have no idea yeah. and again you know the pleasure is 100 percent mine it's this has been like an absolutely unreal conversation um you know this is <sighs> Like there's certain, there's certain times I'm sure, you know, you can attest where like, you can just kind of like see like while something's happening that it's going to make an impact, like in the bigger picture. And I, I feel like this is one of those conversations. Like there's, there's so much in here, like, you know, from all of your stories and your experience and the lessons and uh, the guidance. And I'm going to be watching this one for a very long time to come. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't thank you enough, man. I definitely could not. My pleasure. It has been my pleasure. It took me 20 years to get to this interview. So I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely appreciate it. You have no idea. This is, this is definitely a game changer, you know, for the bigger picture, not even just the podcast. Like this is, this is huge. Right. Now where on social media could you be found? You know, where could the business be found? Where could you be found? Well, there's always belair.co and it's B-E-L-A-I-R-E dot C-O. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best and fastest way to get in touch with me. I do run and operate other businesses, but uh, some of those are private businesses. Some of those are ghost companies that no one should know about, which maybe we'll have a podcast on that someday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, belair.co. I'm on Instagram at Belair Property, Belair Properties. I think that's how we hooked up. We hooked up on Instagram so. and then found out we were on bigger pockets. Yep. Yeah, and, I think that's what it was. Either that or and, LinkedIn. I forget. <laughs> we were so, so pesky saying, Let's do an interview. Let's do an interview. Or I am I may have reached out and said I wanted to be interviewed. I don't know, but uh I'm really glad we did. Oh, so, me too. Um, yeah, I'm on uh bigger pockets, actually on the Bel Air site. I write a lot of blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm up to about 60, 70 blogs right now. More stories about tenant landlord stuff, strategies. I've got blogs there for tenants, residents, uh blogs there for landlords investors so i think uh, as we were doing this interview someday i will write a book and i think the name of the title might be parking up front i think you should that would be insane <laughs> well parking in the front row or something like that so it's it's one heck of an analogy all right. Uh, that's what I've got for now. I look forward to having this come out. I will blitzkrieg it on my social media. Uh, you'll also find us on nwcla.com. That's the Northern Worcester County Landlord Association. Mm -hmm. You are a buy and hold person anywhere in Massachusetts. Hook up with masslandlords.net. That's the central hub for the 22 different landlord associations throughout Massachusetts. Doug Quattrochi does a great job down there. A uh, member of the Worcester Property Owner Association, Northern Worcester County, uh, Greater Lowell Landlord Association. I'll have to join couple. that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Especially, you yeah. Uh, Greater Lowell Landlord Association. I don't know that they're part of Mass Landlords yet, 
-hmm. but I would definitely tap in if you're going to do buy and hold. I mean, the re is a great, but that's like a buffet. Uh, If you're a buy and hold person, then this is a menu where they only do buy and hold topics for for landlords and rental owners. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, Brian, again, man, thank you so much. You have no idea. (laughs) This, This conversation is absolutely, this was such a game changer for me. Thanks. You know, it, <laughs> that's but you know, they like there's so much so much in this episode across like a million different aspects that like there's so much to pull out of here for for a lot of people. You know, and I I really do. I just want to thank you. I can't thank you enough, you know, for for your time and having this conversation with you and it just it's it I can't even like begin to say how valuable you know this was, especially, you know, for myself. You know, and other people as well. Well, I hope so. I hope I hope they can get something out of it, change their life, and uh, just win the game. Of course, and pull into that front parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I'm going to work with that one. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Totally. All right, Kyle. I want to thank you so much for your time. I want to thank you to all your listeners, your audience, and uh, the pleasure has been all mine. Thank Thank you so much. We'll definitely talk soon. For Kyle Curtin, the man with the plan, (laughs) this is Brian Lucier signing off. Signing off. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. You as well. All right, guys. That concludes our Creating Wealth podcast episode for today. I want to thank every single person that has listened this far. It really means a lot to know that people can learn from me and with me as we build wealth together. Hopefully you can take home at least one thing from this podcast that will improve your life just a little bit. If you could, please check me out on social. That's at Kyle Curtin Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on Pockets. Until next time, let's build together.